What's the best note-taking app for 2024? Well, I've looked at nine of the most popular note-taking tools you can download today. Based off of your feedback from a Fred's poll that I put out recently asking which note-taking tool that you used, I'll reveal the answers to the poll at the end, but I'm sure the results will not surprise you. I'll be rating each one of these note-taking tools on my rateometer. Let's go. By the way, I'm a Mac user. I use iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch, but most of the apps will be available on Android or Windows machines as well. And the criteria for me personally as a note taker is quite simple. One, is it simple and easy to use? Two, is it a subscription-based model or is it a one-time purchase? I definitely hold more weight towards a one-time purchase. And the third thing is simply the features and the functionality. What kind of features and functionality that suit me as a note taker do I appreciate the most? Notion is a highly customizable, all-in-one workspace tool for notes, databases, project management, and it uses block-based editing. So basically, everything lives in its own separate block, and then you can just arrange your blocks on a page. I'd say its standout ability is the fact that you can create databases in Notion. Now, for some note takers, that's like way too much, but the ability to use databases in so many different ways makes this a really extensive tool to use, and it's mostly free if you're just using it for personal note taking. They've quite recently added Notion AI as well, which is a paid feature. I've personally been using Notion for a number of years. I know people have made livelihoods, YouTube channels selling templates for Notion, but I do think it can feel quite overwhelming for your average user that just wants to take notes. And I've probably sunk too many hours in the past trying to customize it and get my dashboard looking all nice. I found that using the mobile app has got a lot better over the years, but it still doesn't feel like a mobile first platform because it isn't. And I just feel like if you're gonna use Notion, you kind of need to be more intentional with how you use it rather than using it just as a rough and ready note-taking tool, even though people do use it for that. Anyway, I'm gonna give Notion an eight out of 10 on my rateometer. Evernote is a polarizing note-taking tool because it was so popular back in the day. And I actually used to use Evernote almost exclusively when it first came out on the iPhone. And the real standout feature at the time was its ability to search on text across anywhere, across any document, any picture. And that at the time was pretty revolutionary. But most note-taking apps kind of already offer that now and it doesn't really make Evernote unique anymore. That being said, they have improved the app recently and I have been using it for note taking just to see what it's like. I do think the general UI and the design of the app has improved. The issue I have with it is the same issue that lots of people have had with it for a number of years, which is that the free tier is almost unusable. You kind of have to subscribe and the subscription cost is so high. In the UK, it's like a hundred pounds, which is over a hundred dollars a year just for a note-taking tool. And on the free tier, you can create 50 notes in one notebook and that's it. So it's almost kind of like not worth starting with using it unless you make the commitment to pay. I just think that's the wrong way to go about it. Give people something they can use in the long term for free and make the paid stuff really kind of optional. If it's a good product, people will still pay. I just think overall the pricing just puts you off even trying it. So I'm gonna give Evernote a five out of 10 on my rateometer. OneNote's a note-taking tool I have been using for quite some time at work because we used Microsoft 365 and I absolutely fell in love with this tool. For one, it's almost completely free to use, which is the polar opposite to Evernote. And it's basically like a digital notebook with a flexible canvas for notes, drawings, and multimedia. I describe it as like a scrapbook where everything lives. And I think its standout feature is its usability, its design, it's really well designed. I just find when I'm organically looking through my notes, I find things a lot quicker. I stumble across notes that sometimes I've forgotten I've even written. So you could have one note that consists of images, audio recordings, PDF files that are annotated. It's all really easy and intuitive to do. The free tier gives you five gigabytes of free storage. One of the main issues I had with it is around the fact that you can create different notebooks and within each notebook you create different sections and then within each section you have your different notes. I wish there was like one more tier of hierarchy within a notebook so I can contain more stuff within just a single notebook. There are also no native AI features. I guess this could integrate with Microsoft's Copilot at some point, but right now it's just a standalone bog standard note-taking tool with nothing too kind of edgy about it. Just purely for note-taking, I give Microsoft OneNote an eight out of 10 on my rateometer. 
I've really tried hard to like Obsidian because I know there's a huge cult following. Obsidian is a markdown based note taking app that allows users to build a personal knowledge hub. And once you do that, you can create backlinks between notes and have this visual graph view of how all your notes are linked together. If you want your notes to sync between devices, you need to pay for their cloud sync service, which isn't particularly cheap. And I found myself kind of disappointed that I couldn't just use this across all my devices. I know cloud storage, you know, costs a lot of money for a lot of these companies. But the ability to interlink and visualize the relationships between notes, I think is a really killer feature for people who take note taking really seriously. Of course, the really unique aspect of Obsidian is that there's a whole community of third party plugins that people make for it that make it even more extensive. So if it doesn't have something, the chances are there's a plugin you can get that will give it that feature or that functionality. So that's really, really cool. And I just don't know if I wanna pay eight to $10 a month just to have the privilege of syncing my stuff in a cloud, especially as that subscription doesn't come with like any AI functionality native to the actual tool itself. And I just don't know if I have the energy to like link all my notes. And I feel like it's quite a daunting task migrating all of the stuff you have elsewhere into this tool and then linking it all together. And for that reason, I can't give Obsidian more than a seven out of 10 on my Raytometer. I've downloaded the Bear Notes app about a billion times in the last few years because it's such a beautiful app. Like it's maybe the most beautiful app there is. It's a minimalist note-taking tool that uses Markdown for formatting and you can organize your notes with like hashtags and backlinks, a bit like Obsidian. And there is a free tier available. Again, a bit like Obsidian, if you want to sync between devices, that is a paid for subscription. And whilst the standout features are the elegant design and the, the Markdown support, I don't know if I care that much about Markdown support. I don't personally use Markdown to capture notes and also Bear is limited to Apple devices only, which also I think counts against it a little bit. But where this app shines is its ability to help you focus and like it's distraction free. So I have used it in the past to write YouTube scripts and more long form writing. And if you're gonna use it for like long form writing and note taking, I think you could probably justify the monthly cost, especially because it's only 30 pounds a year, which compared to Evernote is an absolute bargain. It just feels kind of like too nice for the chaotic nature in which I write notes. But nonetheless, I give Bear a seven out of 10 on my Tometer. Now, Apple Notes obviously is an Apple only app. The idea is it's simple, it has basic formatting options, basic features, but kind of gets the job done. What makes it unique as an Apple user is it has deep integration with the operating system of the device you're using. Year on year, Apple has improved the feature list on Apple Notes. You can now have things like backlinks. There are now more formatting options. You can now record audio and transcribe your voice using Apple Notes, which is a really underrated feature. And I think what I like most about Apple Notes is it kind of doesn't get in your way. It's not overly complicated, but there are extensive enough features that if you want to go deeper into it, you can, like the features are there. And I've seen it develop over the years to become a really underrated, really powerful note-taking tool, where I think its only limitations are that it's Apple only, and there's no Apple Watch support, which I'd really like to see because I'd like to be able to record and transcribe into the watch, which other apps like Drafts I know has. That being said, it's a pleasure to use on every single device that I own, and I have to give Apple Notes a nine out of 10 on my Raytometer. Now I'll keep this short because Google Keep is not particularly extensive. I use Google Keep many moons ago when I had an Android device and I absolutely loved it. I loved its simplicity and all the things that I've just said about Apple Notes kind of applied to Google Keep like six or seven years ago. Having downloaded it again recently to try it, it's still the same, like they haven't added anything new. It's just a very basic note-taking tool. I think for some people that's absolutely fine, but for me, it's just too simple, it's too basic. I want some degree of structure and the ability to put things into folders and nest folders in folders. Like I just want a little bit more from a note-taking tool. I'm gonna have to give Google Keep a five out of 10 on my Raytometer. 
Now, Mem is short for memory, and what makes it unique is it's a self-organizing note-taking app that allows users to create, link, and retrieve notes effortlessly. And it uses AI to organize and surface relevant information. It's your second brain. You just store everything in there unstructured. And I'm currently using a trial version of their premium tier. Their free tier does come with limitations. But the idea of it is really cool. The ability to automatically surface relevant notes just by querying AI without the need for like manually tagging and organizing things. I really like this concept. You don't necessarily need to spend your time having to put things in folders and remember where you've put things. But it does feel sort of simplistic, kind of still feels like it's being developed. And the AI can sometimes surface like irrelevant notes. The fact there's no desktop app is a little bit of a killer as well. It kind of stopped me from really committing to using this tool and putting all my notes in it. So I'm going to give Mem a four out of 10. Might be a bit harsh, but there's no desktop app. And for me, that's a really, really big deal. Now, Craft is one that's kind of gone a little bit under the radar. I feel like Craft is a little bit underrated. It's a beautifully designed note-taking tool. It's also free to use with a premium tier if you want to subscribe for more storage and collaboration options. Try to use Craft for a few days just to take notes. And there is a note-taking feature in it, but I felt like it was mainly for documents. Like I felt like most of the features lend themselves to creating these beautiful documents. So if I wanted to create like a really nice glossy document, I think I'd use craft. Like you can make really nice looking stuff. But for note taking, it felt really simplistic. You can capture quick notes in it and it's tied to a day in the calendar. So each day you can create a new note with stuff in it. So it's not quite like other note taking tools where you can create notes that are independent of a date and you can put them in folders. If you want to create something more extensive, you create a document. I really wanted to adopt this tool because it's so nice to use. It didn't quite integrate with my workflow. It felt like a bit of a mishmash between all of the other apps and, and it just wasn't quite what I was looking for. So I give Crafts a solid six out of 10. As a note taker, it just wasn't for me. So there you have it. At least from my list, Apple Notes is the absolute king of note-taking tools. I actually think Apple Notes is probably the best app that Apple makes. And year on year, it's really, really improved. Probably one of its biggest criticisms is it has a yearly update cycle and I wish they'd update it more often. It's a solid tool that's never, ever let me down. And the fact that it comes embedded with my device means that like the sense of ownership of the app, the sense of ownership of my notes is really high. There's no danger that I'm going to lose my notes because I've stopped paying for a subscription. And that's quite a powerful feeling. And also the smart script functionality that improves your handwriting using the Apple Pencil on the iPad. That is such a killer feature. I absolutely love that. Now, I know for a fact, if you've got this far in the video, you definitely disagree with some of the ratings. So let me know which ones you disagree with in the comments below. Here are the results from the poll. Out of about 850 votes, Apple Notes came out on top, although there were many, many other tools that people suggested in the thread itself. So I'll link that down below. Oh, by the way, if you have an iPhone, check out the video at the end of this one for all of the best iPhone accessories that I use. Like if you like the video, subscribe, and until the next time, stay productive.